back on that bird that we roosted last night. There's actually multiple birds nearby here. There's one right in front of us in the clover patch that we're set up on. There's another clover patch behind us and there's a bird on it too. <coughs> we're going with the no decoy setup and I'm not gonna call just a whole lot. I think this bird is gonna strut in this field on its own. So I'm gonna stay mostly quiet and then later on if we need to do calling and decoys I'll, I'll set it up that way. But yesterday I don't think he liked the decoy so we're gonna go no decoy and, and see how it goes. But the birds are talking it's beautiful weather this morning. Alright, they're gonna be flying. They're gonna be flying down in about 10 minutes, so 15 minutes maybe, so Let's see what happens. So there's two toms came out in the field. They had two hens with them. <clears throat> We've considered dropping in this ditch behind us and trying to get closer to them. But as soon as you pop out of the ditch, they can see you. So it's 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 kind of difficult to, to get in close to these birds. And they have hens with them, so they're they're not going to react to the call as much. We had two more gobblers in front of us, and there's a pretty good chance they're going to work through this clover field. So we'll sit tight for a little bit. In this uh, this flatland country, it's it's hard to move on these birds. They can see you everywhere you go. So we're going to uh, stick tight on this clover patch here. We've been seeing lots of birds around it. We have a bird that's hammering over here. We left our setup. We're popping in this ditch. We're gonna go try to kill him. He's a couple hundred yards away.
in this turkey. <clears throat> and I thought I saw a turkey in this brush. I thought maybe it was him, but then I heard him gobble a long ways off, maybe 80 more yards. I stepped right on top of a, a nesting hen. <laughs> Unbelievable. She flew off. He hasn't gobbled since. What are the odds? You step right on top of him and nesting hen. She flies right over the top of him. I'm pretty sure he's spooked now. What are the odds of that? Is that a hen that flew up? Yeah, she was nesting right there. He was just a little further, huh? Did she you ever see him? No, the bird that I saw was that hen. She flew right over the top of him and she was putting the whole way. And he hadn't gobbled ever since she flew. Yeah, she flew over that other end of the private there. <coughs> yeah, he was. So with that he probably ran back in there too. Yeah, he probably ran back up that draw. Well, we have successfully moved our camp over here close to where the birds are. That way, if people start to show up to hunt for Saturday, they might see us camped here and go the other direction. It's about, it's pushing four o'clock. It is four o'clock. We're gonna head back out. I just heard a bird gobble. So, maybe they'll be hot this afternoon. This is my last evening probably. I'm gonna hunt tomorrow till one or two, then, then head home. So, let's get it done. Saturday morning, April 27th, <clears throat> we snuck in as close as we could get to where this bird's roosting. We worked the back side of a tree line and popped over the tree line and poked our head out into this little field where he's been strutting in the morning. So the wind is blowing really hard already and it's only supposed to blow harder so the birds might be really quiet this morning this is my last morning so I've got to make it happen I'm gonna hunt till around lunch and then hit the road and go home so got to make it happen today if this bird does what he did yesterday morning he's gonna strut right in front of me at 25 yards Fingers crossed. shut up he flew down the other way 
We're still trying to spot him in this corn, cut cornfield. We might have been a little impatient. But with the, the wind blowing, we knew they weren't going to gobble long. So, we're going to try to spot him in this cornfield. And if we can't do that, we're going to go sit somewhere out of the wind and try to catch some birds just moving through. Well, our morning hunt was rather uneventful, I guess. We had that bird on the roost. He flew down the other field. Um, maybe a little impatiently, we, we went down the ditch to try to pop up. He may have still been in the ditch. He may have still been right on the edge. His hen may have still been in the tree. I, I don't really don't know. There was a, a hen that was in a different tree, um, but we don't think that that was his hen, possibly. Um, probably a little bit too aggressive, but it was the last morning and, and he was going the wrong direction, so we had to try to make a move. Then we, we went back to this area that's kind of been kind of the hub of all this turkey activity and uh, just sat up there and in a little, made a little ground blind and and sat up for a couple hours. Ended up hearing a couple gobbles. I think it's that same bird. And then we saw him and his hen cross a cut cornfield um, or a cut bean field, one of the two. And they went up um, towards where we almost killed him yesterday. The wind is currently blowing 25 to 30 miles an hour. And uh, the birds are probably not going to talk much. It's 10:30. I'm gonna meander around for a couple hours, just trying to get some birds to hit off the, off the roads. Uh, maybe walk into a couple places that I haven't been into yet. Just try to get a bird to gobble as a last ditch effort. But I'm gonna guess by one or 1 30, two o'clock, I'm on the road back to Texas. Um, not to say that it's not gonna happen in this wind, but I've never had much luck in the wind. So I've had a blast. Um, we had some really close calls, saw some good birds, um, heard a lot of gobbles, so I've had a good time so far. Thanks for Aaron for meeting here. Um, if you haven't watched any of his stuff, it's Flatland Whitetails. He lives up here in Kansas. He kills some really good deer, um, and he does a little bit of turkey hunting and fishing too. So uh, if you haven't checked him out, check him out, Flatland Whitetails. His name's Aaron, good guy. He camped with me and uh, kind of showed me the ropes out here. It's nice to have somebody that hunts this place during deer season knows how to get around. So y'all stick with me just a little bit longer. We're gonna go try to uh, spook up some birds, I guess, and make a little last ditch run and gun effort. So y'all keep watching. Well, that's all from Kansas. Had a good trip, had a good time camping with Aaron. Had a lot of uh, laughs and a good time. So it's good to just get out and enjoy God's country and get to see some of this beautiful landscape that Kansas has to offer. Um, there's definitely plenty of birds up here. <laughs> Me and Aaron were just talking and said, well, I guess we're just not that great at turkey hunters because some people showed up at camp last night and killed one this morning on their first morning so I guess there's a little luck to everything and uh, maybe we just need to up our skills so we can have more luck so uh, I plan on maybe doing this every year I, I really enjoyed it up here there's a bunch of birds um, they're, they're fairly talkative but if I come again I think I'm gonna come a little bit later uh, when they're less hinned up that was our biggest problem is is the birds having hens with them. So I think maybe next year, first week of May, possibly second week of May, is when I'll make try to make it up here. <clears throat> but I had a great time. Once again, thanks for Aaron to come and hunting with me. Um, if Once again, if you haven't checked out his stuff, it's Flatland Whitetails. He's on YouTube. He's on Instagram. Um, he has some pretty awesome content from some Kansas deer hunting. So be sure to check him out. 
And as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, DIY Whitetail. Um, YouTube, DIY Whitetail. Um, I have a Facebook page and a website as well, uh, DIYWhitetail.com. So check me out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe.